Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with another video textbook review. And today we're going to be reviewing ugh, McKee's Pathology of the Skin with Clinical Correlations, 5th edition. Um, you can hear that these are hefty, weighty volumes, and they are packed full of amazing derm path knowledge. I first discovered the McKee uh, textbook series uh, or, or textbook when I was a, a Dermpath fellow and I loved it from the beginning because it is it has numerous photographs that are very high quality. They're beautifully done. And those of you who follow me online um, and watch my YouTube channel, you know, I am really a stickler about image quality. I love images to be high quality, to look good. That's the whole reason of buying a pathology textbook is to get good pictures and have good explanations. And this book does that beautifully and not just with pathology pictures, microscopic pictures, but also with clinical photos. So what I love is that there are lots of clinical photos to go in here corresponding to the microscopic photo and in derm path, that is so incredibly important. So I've loved the book from the first time I looked at it when I was a fellow. It is, the McKee book has been the book that I go to as my main derm path reference. Um, in my seven and a half years of practice, it's the book I turn to multiple times per week when I need to look up uh, what the path is on some obscure entity. And um, we'll go inside and take a look, uh, a deeper look inside the book um, using the expert consult platform, the digital version of the book um, in a few minutes. But let me just tell you first um, a few things. So number one, whoops, number one, um, Dr. McKee started this series a long time ago. He wrote it and incredibly one of the uh, editions, I think the second edition, he hand wrote uh, before computers, before, before he had started using computers, he hand wrote it with a uh, Mont Blanc uh, fountain pen. I think it was 900,000 words, if I recall. And then after that, he was like, we're never doing this again. Um, uh, McKee is an incredible storyteller, an incredible man, a wonderful pathologist. And um, I, I, again, I fell in love with his book before I ever knew him. But in the past few years, I've gotten to know him online. And then in real life, I've met with him several times. And he has just been such a wonderful uh, mentor and colleague and friend. And I feel uh, such uh, so honored to be able to know him and to learn from him, uh, even though he now is retired and lives in uh, rural France. So if you want to know more about Dr. McKee, I did a video interview of him um, in Kiev, Ukraine at the first uh, annual McKee Derm Conference, which was held back in May, 2019. So I had the, the pleasure of speaking there and then interviewing McKee live um, on stage in front of my, uh, my iPhone recording it. And that's on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below in the video description. And uh, it's uh, really cool because he tells some of the stories about writing his book. But now that he's retired and after working on, I think four editions, he finally said, I'm gonna pass this book on to other capable hands because I mean, I wrote a small book and it took an enormous amount of work. And after doing that and spending a year writing a, a couple hundred page thin book, I cannot fathom how to write something like that. I just, I can't see how to do it in a lifetime, let alone have this thing be in its fifth edition by now. What a monumental undertaking. And I'm so grateful for the people that pour in that kind of work because these are the books that, that I use and that countless other uh, pathologists use in practice to be able to provide better care for our patients. So what a noble pursuit for people to do. Um, the book is currently um, edited by Eduardo Colonier and co-edited by Thomas Bren, uh, Alex Lazar, and Steve Billings all of whom are fantastic pathologists. They're very skilled diagnostically, and they're also wonderful writers. Numerous papers in the medical literature in dermatopathology and also soft tissue pathology um, from these four um, amazing people. So I can't think of anyone better uh, for Dr. McKee to have passed his legacy, his textbook legacy onto than these people. So now let's take a look inside the book and see uh, just why I love it so much. So this is a look inside the book. Let's take chapter nine um, as an example, granulomatous necrobiotic and perforating dermatoses. Um, it's got a list at the beginning of all the different diseases that the chapter will cover along with clickable links that can take you down to that section. So let's do um, perforating disorders. All right, so um, there are beautiful clinical images. And look at that high quality close-up view, really fantastic. 
um, a lot of clinical description, and then a description of what you're going to see microscopically in the disease like reactive perforating collagenosis. Um, this is uh, a real nice perforation of the collagen through the epidermis there and that cup-shaped crater filled with uh, purple debris. Um, oh, that's a really nice image too. See, I just love the images in this book. They're fantastic. And look, also included this nice trichrome stain showing you the blue uh, collagen fibers. So both H&E and special stains and immunostains uh, get included in the book. Um, and then there's nice tables, lots of nice tables showing how to sort out things that, that can look quite similar and be in the same differential diagnosis um, with each other. So again, I wasn't joking. There are tons of clinical picks in this uh, book. Um, along with uh, really high quality photomicrographs. Oh, there, down there is elastosis perforans serpiginosa with the, the Verhoff von Giesen uh, elastic stain. So um, you can click to uh, get a zoomed in view. Um, but I would say this is one critique I have, and it's totally not of the textbook, but rather of the expert consult site. If you click an image, it will enlarge, and you can, you can zoom in even more if you want using this slider bar at the top. Um, and then over here, you can see the uh, figure legend. But look what happens when you go back. It doesn't take you back to where you were reading about EPS. It takes you all the way back to the beginning of the chapter. So I looked into this more and found out this is actually not a problem um, with the uh, publisher, but rather with the expert consult site. And I have noticed this on many different books, basically all different books on the expert consult site. So anyway, I, I just wanted to bring this up, not at all to criticize the, the amazing McKeederm book, but to show you a trick that I figured out. So when you want to enlarge the image, you can um, uh, right click it. Oh, maybe that's not going to work. Um, on my Mac, I hold the command key, but I think on Windows, you would hold the control key and then click. And what it will do is it will open it into a new tab then you can see the image, and then when you're done, just close that tab and go back to where you were. I use this book actually to teach my Durham residents. We do um, teaching sessions with them, didactics, and for um, instead of making a whole PowerPoint, I just decided when we're teaching about perforating disorders, I just pull up this chapter um, on a big screen and have the resident sit with me, and I scroll through it and talk through and show the pictures. It's been a wonderful way to teach. It saves me a lot of time not having to make PowerPoints. And again, this book has everything, clinical path and lots of comments on things. I also really like um, that in this book, there are a lot of times in Derm Path where the microscopic features of certain disease are totally nonspecific or two or three different diseases can look identical to each other. And this book really takes time to say that, you know, it'll say the histologic appearance of reactive perforating collagenosis and acquired perforating collagenosis are identical. You have to have clinical to distinguish them. Um, the McKee Derm book goes right out and says that. And I think that's really great because a lot of times I struggle with that. There'll be some esoteric uh, inflammatory condition that I've only heard of and never seen before. And then when I look it up, it says, yeah, there's maybe maybe a little sponge, maybe a little perivascular. Basically, it can look like almost anything. And this is really something that needs to clinically be decided. So it's nice to have a book show that. I think every once in a while, you'll see books or papers where they really try to say, oh, well, this has been described before. And that's great. But just because something has been described in the literature doesn't mean that that's not necessarily going to be practically useful in sorting it out from other diseases in the differential. And I think the the, the uh, McKee uh, Pathology of the Skin book is really great because it um, is very up front in telling you that, that, hey, this is not a disease that you're going to make a diagnosis of microscopically. So it kind of gives you that freedom to know, hey, it's okay to put in my report. I just see nonspecific features and I I can't tell if it's entity X or Y because those diseases don't look like anything special under the microscope. Okay, let me show you um, another uh, area, um, or actually there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Another, um, I guess, critique of the expert consult platform, again, is that when you search for a word like, say, psoriasis, what do you want? You want to have the beginning of the psoriasis section of the book, the chapter, right? But instead, it brings up all sorts of images and figure images where psoriasis is mentioned. If you go, um, oops, if you go up here to the top, you can change from all to um, text, and then it will show you every time the word psoriasis is mentioned in the text, which again is not what you want. So that's a problem I still haven't found a perfect solution for. You often have to scroll through and hunt around to be able to find where the actual chapter is. Again, a problem I've seen with every book that I've looked at on Expert Consult. So hey, Expert Consult, if you guys are listening, please fix this problem and the uh, image problem. 
Uh, but otherwise, again, these are this is nothing to do with the textbook publisher or textbook authors. And overall, honestly, these are very mild problems because the expert consult platform is really useful. I love having printed paper textbooks. They smell good. They look pretty. It feels nice to flip through pages. But let's face it, in my day-to-day -day practice, I'm really busy. I got a lot of stuff on my plate. And it's a lot easier for me to go and type in a word and search for it, even though I might have to scroll around a little bit because of the uh, issues with search and expert consult. But I would. I, it's a lot faster for me to do that. I wish I had more time to sit down by the fire with a big copy of McKee and um, something nice to drink and flip through it and read. And hopefully maybe in my retirement, I'll have time to do that because it's such a beautiful book and it's so beautifully printed. The quality of the printing is really wonderful. But in practice, I actually use the expert consult platform the majority of the times when I'm looking up uh, in all books um, and uh, the, uh, the printed books are uh, very beautiful though and very nice. And if you're lucky enough to have time to read through printed books in your practice, you will really enjoy having access to that. Um, again, lots of clinical photos here and uh, great examples of all the variants of psoriasis, even very extreme examples. And then let's look at melanoma so we can see something neoplastic. Um, again, if you look uh, over here under the melanoma chapter, it's got clinical, histologic, all the different types of cells, prognostic features, how to stage, immunohistochemistry, and then all of the numerous variants of melanoma and, and issues like um, combined melanocytic and squamous tumors and, and basaloid tumors and all these different things and even molecular. It really goes into all the different details and delves very deeply and has a really nice references. Um, the, uh, the citations here, again, I'm going to hold command or you can hold control and click it and that will bring up the uh, references in a separate page. Um, my Wi-Fi is a bit slow today, and it'll take you right there to show you the reference. I have to admit, when I'm when I'm looking for writing a paper or um, a book chapter or something, I often will look here to see because the authors have done such a great job of finding the key articles in the literature and citing those. So I will use this as a starting point for what papers to read about a topic, and then from there conduct further PubMed, or I prefer actually Google Scholar. I think it searches better. Um, I'll, I'll perform a PubMed or Google Scholar search to look further for additional uh, papers, but I really like that the authors do such a great job of citing the key landmark studies in the literature. So if you're ever looking for what um, primary literature to read on a topic, Starting with the McKee Durham chapter, going to the reference section, and then looking at uh, papers from there is a great place to begin your journey, especially if you're a resident first writing a case report or something. I often advise my own residents, go look it up there in McKee Durham and see what references they have, and then, and then expand your search uh, from there. Obviously, don't just stop there. Always search uh, further to see if there's new things that have been published uh, since or other tangential uh, topics that may be of interest. So um, looking back... Uh, looking back at um, the melanoma section, I mean, look at how many images under melanoma. Just numerous, numerous images. Um, let's go back here to clinical. Oh, wait, I forgot. I pulled up a separate page. There we go. See, that's why I do that. So I don't have to worry about going back. I just pull up extra tabs. So lots of great high quality clinical photos again, from very early to, to very extreme advanced cases and everything in between. I mean, that's really incredible quality. And then, um, in addition, there's some nodular melanomas, one that's mimicking a, a pyogenic granuloma. And then here are nice, uh, high-quality microscopic photos, which by now you realize this is what the book is made of. So if you're looking for a definitive dermatopathology reference textbook that has basically everything you could want, both clinical and path combined, I highly recommend um, McKee's Pathology of the Skin with Clinical Correlations 5th Edition. Um, I was provided a, a free copy of this book, which is actually donated to my uh, university um, department, my, my Dermpath uh, department library, not to my personal library. And I was not paid anything or told what to write or say. I'm giving you my honest opinion about this book. And like I said, it's the book that I actually use in my practice and I really love it and I think you will too. So if you wanna buy a copy, um, I'm gonna put links down in the video description below and um, some other information down there. And again, I think um, if you get this, you will not be disappointed. I certainly have not. Uh, thanks again for watching and I appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and add comments below. Um, if there are other particular books you want me to review, uh, let me know. Thanks a bunch.